iCloud. Oh my goodness. I am here today with my fabulous, amazing friend, Tara LaPera. And I like, I could go on and on and on with all the amazing things about her and just her amazingness and her willingness to just give and share and love as a woman, as a mom, as a friend. Um, I could just go on and on about her, but I want to for you guys to get to know her. But one of the things that I, I love about Tara is she is all about self-love. Like she, that is like her passion. Um, that is her love language, I think is is self-love but I just want to take a moment and Tara and just say thank you so much for being here today because I know whatever you what however we go with this conversation it's going to be magical 100 percent absolutely 100 yeah. welcome to the show my friend thank you and happy birthday oh thank happy you. happy birthday <laughs> today is a truly special day to be here with you thank you so much I'm truly honored and you know how I feel about you I mean the years of friendship that we've had and the, the connection. I mean, honestly, the second we met was just like, oh my God, she's going to be my forever friend. And through all of this, through, you know, all the years of you and I in network marketing and through COVID, we always stayed connected, no matter how far away I moved from you. Yeah. Um, and I just, I just adore you. I'm so proud of you for everything that you're doing and the connection that you align with other women and how you just light and break them up. It's just true. I feel like I should be interviewing you right now. I second. know. I was like, are you interviewing me? Thank you. <laughs> you deserve it. You deserve it all, love. You truly do. Oh, I love you. And I'm glad that you brought that up with network marketing and stuff too, because yeah. literally like that is where we, we met. And if we hadn't been in network marketing, like in the same company, we would not have met because we don't live in the same town. You know, we're not in the same area. And I am so thankful for that. And so many, so many times network marketing gets such a bad rap and, you know, people like poo poo on it, but really like it is such a gift to me for what it enabled me to do with my kids. When I, you know, first started, I was able to stay at home with my children. I was able to earn trips. And then you know, later on, it, it allowed me to, to leave my teaching career and to meet fabulous people like you that even when, you know, if you're not with a company anymore, or you're not in the same downline, it does not matter. No, it, it doesn't matter. Because we are supporting you, the person and wanting the best for you. And that's what I love about our friendship is that we truly want the best for each other. Yes. 110%. Absolutely. Yeah. God so knew what he was doing. Yeah. And I would love to just kind of dive into, to, you know, where you've been the last couple of years, because your story, I know a lot about your story and I'm sure there's things that I don't know, but there's so many, you know, roller coaster rides, so many ups, yes. so many downs throughout yes. your life. And, you know, when you were living on the East coast, you know, you really started diving into this self-love and self-care and really making that a movement for yourself. How, how did that start? Like, did something, you know, were you at a breaking point? Were you at a point in your life where you're like, you know, the wheels were kind of coming off? How did that start for you? So personally, if you, if I really sat here and looked back at it, I feel like it started right as I became a new mom. I was 21 when I had Alicia. <clears throat> And knowing that I was about to be a parent, I, you know, all my past and everything started coming up for me. Like, where was I? What did I go through? I lacked so much self-love, confidence. I didn't believe in myself. And how was I supposed to show up for this brand new baby girl that was coming into my life if I fully and truly didn't love me and didn't know who I was? Yeah. So I really started digging in that way. And, you know, and if you read my book where I co-authored in Women Who Rise, I share a lot about my past and my story and my jobs of where I was that truly didn't give me any of that. So my journey was focusing on getting out of that, that history, that job that I was stuck in for so many years to be able to stand strong and start to love myself. So I really started digging in, in that way. It really started when I was 21. Yeah. And then of course I lost myself along the way, you know, I got into the big corporate world and, um, I was hardly ever home and it was only me raising Alicia. And I really started to drink a lot. And I started like pounding down the bottles of wine. I was two to three bottles of wine a night and then packing on the pounds. And I was like, this isn't me. This is where the anxiety, the depression, all of that started. I was like, I was on this great journey. And then here we go. We dip, you know, 
although I was showing up as an incredible mom, I wasn't showing up for myself again. And I think it was that's, that's the key point is showing up for us so we could be 110% for our other, you know, loved ones, friends, spouses, children. And so then that's where I kind of met Mark, um, a few years later. Yeah. And he started me on this like health journey and it was, and of course there's a lot in between, you know, falling into relationships that you were just like, why am I in this? How do I get out of this? And then I just kept praying. I kept bringing God back into my life because he was there when I was younger, you know, through my parents, but it wasn't the way that I fully wanted it because they were skipping around all the time. They weren't always in the same church. They weren't always in the same beliefs. They were, so they were finding themselves and our, as our parents, we go on their journey, right? No matter what their journey is, we're stuck. We're on it until we can fully get out of it. So I felt like I was stuck in their journey, but I always knew that God was there for me. But how did that look? What did that look like? Did I have to go to a church? What what does that church look like? How does it feel? So I was on a journey of that as well. And I knew that no matter what, he was just going to listen to me. So I prayed a lot. I prayed a lot to God, even though I may not have shared it with a lot of people that I knew that God was there for me. I knew he was there for me in my heart and I knew it for me and Alicia. So I went on, you know, the... Uh, journey of all those relationships and finding myself. And then I met my husband, Mark, and it was like, God was like, here you go. Here's this man who's going to lift you up and allow you to be who you truly are meant to be. Because I find that when you are in relationships with somebody, it's, it's a partnership, right? And if you're in a partnership to where somebody's not lifting you up or you're not feeling 110% of your, it, it's, it works simultaneously. And he truly brought me the right person to do that for me because I didn't have that in the past. Yeah. Um, so, and then I went on like this health journey and then that's how Mark and I got into network marketing and the health and wellness industry. Um, and then tons of babies later. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, it really started young. It started at 21, which I feel like happens with a lot of women. You know, my daughter now, Alicia, is 21. And I feel like she's now going through this um, self-love and manifesting time right now because we become these young women and we're like, okay, here was my life growing up with my parents. I'm now in the real world. Like, who am I and who am I going to show up for, you know, for me and everybody around me? So that's where it started. So when you do, like, when you look at like where you are right now, what, what forms of self, like, what does self-love actually mean to you? Is it outgoing and buying and shopping and doing all of those things? Is it internal? Is it like a combination of both, like spiritual, mental, like all those things? Like, what is it, like, what's your definition for you of like self-love and self-care? So first my relationship with God, I think that's the most important part. I mean, um, putting him into my life has changed my life in so many ways. So putting him first and involving him into everything, like even before I got on this, this call with you or any coaching calls that I get on with other women, I always pray and say, dear Lord, please give me the words and the guidance that these women need to hear and feel. So I feel like he is my, he is my drive. He's, he is the one who makes me love myself and vice versa. Um, And then you know, showing up for me, you know, doing things, pampering. I love getting pampered and, you know, getting facials and things like that. Um, And then, you know, just spending some quiet time with myself, whether that looks like journaling in my journal, which, you know, I would love to share with you guys about, um, or always reading my um, Jesus's calling book every morning. That's self-love to me. This gives me that guidance throughout my day. And, um, you know, just loving every bit of me and my body. You know, there was times where I didn't love different things of me and I changed them or, and sometimes changing certain things is not good because then you find out that there's things in the, in the future that are going to crumble up on you or attack you. You know what I mean? Like we were talking earlier about my breast implant illness, you know, that was something that I struggled with for a while. I had these small boobs and I was like, who am I? Like, why do I want this? I don't want this. I want something more bigger. You know, I, I felt like that was at the right time, but now truly me finding out how I really do love myself is getting them out of my body, going back to the body that God gave me. Um, that's how you should truly love yourself. The way that you were brought into this world because he made you special for a reason. Um, And then just being with my babies and loving on them and having them love on me and giving all the, you know, kisses and snuggles and we call it nuggles. We love nuggling (laughs) on the couch. (laughs) 
Well, I did. It's fun to go shopping, you know, and get things for yourself too, but I'm not that kind of person. I, I'd rather buy something for you. You know, I'd rather call you and just be like, how are you doing? Or send you a voice message. Lighting somebody else up is truly a self-love part on me too, because I see you brighten up and I made your day or somebody else's day, like standing in a line or at the store. We don't realize what we can truly fully do for somebody in that moment. We don't know what they're going through, especially in this world today. You know, COVID really changed our world. And to put a little bit of self-love on somebody just really reflects back onto you and, and how, you know, yeah. how you show well, up. Well, I know because um, we're friends, but I know you have a bunch of littles and I'm curious because you do have littles. So I want you to share about that, like your kids' ages and things like that. But also, how do you find time to journal? Because I think, you know, listeners and anyone listening to this, moms, like we are all so busy, busy, right? We always, we overuse that word, busy, busy, busy. We're wearing so many hats and we're feeling, oh my gosh, I have all these things that I have to do. There's no time for me to sit and journal. You know, how do you find time for that? Because you do have littles running around at home. How do you prioritize doing that? Because that is for yourself versus putting yourself last. Um, so yes, and we do always use that word. It's a big filler for all of us. And you know, I'm guilty of using that as well. Oh, I'm so busy. I can't do this. Um, and then we get frustrated and then we wind up in that crazy circle. So um, I never made time for myself before being a you know, not a parent, but now I truly find that it is mentally, you prepare yourself mentally for that day, for that morning. So this is how I, I go about my day, right? And not every day does it always work out, but I do my best to make sure that this happens. So before I even open my eyes and my body realizes that I'm awake, first thing that I do is thank the Lord above for giving me another amazing blessed day here on earth. And then I, you know, will say, thank you for, you know, my husband, my children, you know, you, dear Lord, my family, my friends, everybody. So I bless everybody and myself before getting out of bed. That is the first thing. I never grab my phone in the morning. And a lot of my good friends and family know if it's important, you're going to call me. But if there's a text or something in social media can totally wait. It's just not, it's not on my, it's not my jam, you know, right now. <laughs> I'm not a TikToker, by the way, either. Like I'll go on maybe, maybe twice in a month. Um, so I will do that, get up, I get the kids ready. And during school time is usually I get them all out the door and then I come home and that's when I sit. I have my peace and I, I will do that. When it's not school time, that is when I will get up a few minutes earlier. And if they start to trickle and get up, they know mommy's writing. They know that I'm doing stuff, you know? And I mean, I feel like they're always a part of this book. This is first. I read my, my little Jesus is Calling um, verse first. And sometimes Raylan or somebody will ask me like what it is. I'll take a picture of it. And then later on in the morning, I'll share it on social media with people. It's crazy the amount of people that actually will message me and say that totally hit home for me. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and I journal, you know, and it looks like, and this is my journal. I created this last or this September was just a year. It's um, self-love and success. It's a self-love and manifesting journal. And I'll just jot all the things that I'm grateful for, do all my you know, gratitude or my gratitudes, and then all the things that I want to manifest that come up. And then sometimes if I don't fully journal in the morning, I'll do that in the afternoon or even in the evening, because it depends on, but no matter what, give yourself at least 10 minutes of a day to read something, to do some breathing, praying, meditation, because it really will set the tone for the day. Totally will set the tone for that. And I did forget to mention that every one of my children and myself, we make our beds before we start the day. Ooh. Like, it doesn't matter what theirs looks like, but they know to pull the blanket up and to cover everything. Yeah. It, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it just is like, okay, my sleep is done. Here goes my day. And they yeah. make their, they make their bed. So it is um, routine. What, is good. what do you journal about? Like, cause I know so many people are like, what am I going to write about? I have nothing to journal. Like am I supposed to journal? Like, Oh, all the things I'm so like upset about and angry about. Am I supposed to like manifest, like make things up? Like, do you have recommendations? Like what is journaling? Like, what is it? I'm not a writer. You know, so many people say that, like, I don't have anything to write about. What do you so journal? Every, yeah. So every day it might be hard to journal. Maybe you just focus on just your gratitudes and things that you're wanting to manifest. Um, sometimes I will bullet point on my journal side 
and just be like things that um, I've done that I'm proud about or things that I'm praying for little for people. Um, because on the bottom portion of the journal side, it says, who will I love on today? Whether that looks like it's yourself and you're going to get pampered, whether it's one of your children, whether it's your spouse or a friend, or you know somebody's going through something and you want to love on them for that day. And that means you have to reach out to them. You have to pray for them and you have to reach out to them. So sometimes it's just about other people. It doesn't always have to be about yourself. Um, and then I think bullet pointing is, is a lot of fun because sometimes the paper, the pen does not flow on paper for people. And it doesn't always for me either. There are days where I literally will start and it amazes me how I can just go. But then there's times where yeah. not much comes out, but it's okay. Right. It's okay. And, I, and I think also with journaling, because I do journal as well, having sentence structure is not important. Yeah. So just kind of whatever is coming out of yeah. your brain, it might be like broken sentence, it might be a word. It might be like just thoughts, like random, like grocery yep. store items, like, oh my God, whatever, like <laughs> whatever, like, cause squirrel, I mean, it's yes, life. exactly, yeah. it's real life. And so if you've got five minutes and you're just like, okay, I'm just writing. It doesn't have to be like capital letters and then a period and an exclamation mark here and double exclamation, like it doesn't, it, the form does not matter. Yeah. It's whatever you're writing down is what's meant to be written down. And a lot of people like to say it's brain dumping, like yeah. whatever maybe is on your brain. Some people do it at night before they go to bed because if Yeah. And that's what I said. It doesn't, that part portion does not have to be during the day. Absolutely. Yeah, because a lot of the time, like, especially if you're stressed out or you have a hard time sleeping, sometimes it's because as women, our brains never stop. Yes. So when we go to sleep at night, sometimes just having a pad of paper next to your bed or your journal and doing that at nighttime, then maybe it'll help you sleep better because then you've kind of gotten it out too. Yeah. And you can bullet point things that you need to do in the morning, you know, so that way it's already set there. You have your list of things that you're, you're wanting to do. Um, but it's, it's important to not only just journal for yourself, but journal for other people when things are, you know, pouring out of your heart. I've wrote messages in my book that I will take a picture of it and send it to the person. Like I thought of you and this is what I wrote for you. And it just, it really, you know, it just lightens up their day that yeah. you're thinking about them. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. So you said, you mentioned briefly Mark, and then you mentioned that you, lots of babies after that. So we never got into that. Like, tell us a little bit about your kids. Like how old are they? Because you have a lot of littles. <laughs> yes. So Alicia is 21. Um, Mark came into our life when she was 11 and Mark didn't have any kids and Mark's seven years younger than me. So, you know, once our relationship started blossoming and, you know, he proposed, I knew he was going to want children. We talked about it and um, we prayed very hard for Raylan and that Raylan is six years old now. She just turned six in, in September. And then um, a few years later, of course, we were trying for Hudson but in between that time of Raylan and Hudson, I had found out about, I have a half sister who I was never raised with. Um, her name is Hope. And I had found out that um, she was pregnant. She struggles from drug addiction. She was born to drugs and also has been addicted to drugs since the age of 12. So she had given birth to my nephew um, at the time of birth. His name was Kevin. He was um, premature and he struggled from drug addiction. So of course the state stepped in and, you know, I had gotten notice from my dad about it and I talked to Mark and I was like, look, you know, this is an opportunity for us to have a, our first little boy, you know, and immediately my husband said yes. So baby Kevin came home to us straight from the hospital. Now, since we have adopted him, um, this June was just a year that he became Charles Grant LaPera. So we call him Charlie and he's the sweetest little boy. Um, he did struggle for some time with the, you know, uh, at least a little over two months with, you know, um, what do you call it? Oh my God, I'm like drawing a blank of it. Uh, NAS baby. So he had drug withdrawals and he had a lot of health issues and things, but he is the smartest, sweetest little boy right now. He is just, he's, a, he's just truly the best. He was meant to come into our world for so yeah, many things. We learned a lot about him and he taught us a lot about us too, especially patience, <laughs> lots of patience. Um, so he's three. He was just three in April. So he'll be four in April. And everybody was like, now that you have Charlie, you're going to have, you're going to get pregnant. And we're like, no, we're going to wait. Um, so we did, we got pregnant. <laughs> everybody was right. And we got pregnant with Hudson. 
Hudson was a little uh, premature as well. And Hudson is now two. They're both born in April. So they celebrate their birthdays together. And they're only one year and three days apart. And man, can it be some challenging days with two little boys. Yeah. But I, I just, I truly thank God every day for them. You know, for all my babies, every one of them, as you know, you know, your, your boys take you on different challenges. They're different, you know, even though they could do the same things, they're two totally different kids, right? they have their own paths and you learn so much from them and you want to teach them so much. So we are in lots of different places at different times with 21, six, three, and two yeah. and a 36 year old husband. So of course he could be my child at times too. <laughs> oh my God, I love that. But we have our challenging moments, but you know what? It's, it is, you know, people always say, how do you do it? But there's moms out there that have more kids than me and they do it. You just do it. There's days you cry. There's days you do nothing but pray. There's days that you're on the floor playing. Like it just works. It just truly works out. You find because you have a 21 year old and then you also have, you know, three, four year olds at home. Yeah. Is there a difference in how you are parenting? I mean, obviously you were a single mom and now you're married and you have support of your husband and, you know, is there a big difference in, in yourself as a mom and maybe things that you didn't do, maybe that you do now that you're like, man, if I had done it differently, like, are, is it just different now that you it have? Is. And it's so funny you say this because Alicia brings this up to me all the time. She's like, mom, Sorry. you yell at me like that. Or you didn't do this. You know, no, 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 it's good. It's good. Yeah. So being a single parent, I felt like, you know, even though I worked a lot, I, you know, I had to make sure I had the two you know, I had to show up for dad and mom because her dad just wasn't there, still isn't really today. And um, so I had to play the role of, you know, be a mom and dad. So I felt like I probably overdid a lot, maybe, I don't know. But I also, you know, had my mom, my sister, we were all very close at that time. And she had her cousins. Um, and now having all the kids, I find out that <laughs> being older, you say, oh my God, I have so much more patience. I don't think I do really. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, but you try to, COVID has helped me. It, it has helped me in that part because I feel like I zoned in more now. I'm trying to really, we spend individual time with the kids, like Raylan and daddy will go out on day dates or, you know, me and the boys will do individual things. It's very important to break their time up because we are such a big family now. It's not just me and Alicia. It's me, Alicia, and all her siblings. So we, you know, we'll focus on a family all together and go do stuff, but then we'll focus on us individually, whether it's just playing Barbies in the room for 30 minutes yeah. or going in, you know, in the playroom and, you know, playing with Hudson or Charlie and Charlie loves to read books like, and do puzzles. So when you're down on the floor with them, you don't have to go outside and do things, but I feel like, um, breaking it up individually has truly helped us big yeah. time because you can, you can get overwhelmed, you know, but, um, the patience part, <laughs> it's tough. It's tough being older. It really is. But you do find that grace in there, you know, and it, we do cute little things like at dinner time, we'll say our prayers and we go around the table and we ask everybody, what was the best thing that you did today? What was the thing that just lit you up inside? And we'll do that every night. And sometimes it'll be like, Charlie will yell, you know, I watched Mickey Mouse or Hudson will be like dinosaurs, you know, but it's just those cute little moments that they, you see them, you know, you see them light up. And, um, I think just, just showing up and, and being the best parent that you can, not every day is going to be perfect. Yeah. Not, not like wishing it away, you know, like I know when, you know, you're like, oh my gosh, I can't wait till these horrible twos are over and these terrible twos. <laughs> oh, and it'll be easier when they're not a baby and I'm up and I'm doing everything. Not always. Because Alicia's 21 and there's still days yeah. that it's not so yeah. easy. Yeah. No, we it's just, it's our journey. It's our life, you know, it really is. But um, to say that it's different, it has its differences, you know, from raising Alicia to now raising three little ones. It's more, it's definitely more chaotic, you know. But um, again, God brought me on this journey for a reason. God brought me all my babies at the right time for the right reasons. And it's just truly grateful. Well, I want to dive back in because you mentioned it briefly. And I know this is something that you are going through right now. And I know a lot of women are going through this. Um, I have had a couple friends um, go through this as well, as, as much as well as you. So I had asked you, would you be willing to talk about this? But um, 
I want to talk about your breast. <laughs> let's talk about your breast. Okay. Yeah, let's talk about them. <laughs> um, because you are getting ready to, ha- you have breast implants, which you yeah. will share, but you're getting ready to have them removed. And yeah. so I would love if you could just kind of share that journey, um, and realization and kind of what you have discovered with your breast implants. So as I talked about, like my jobs as, you know, as a younger mom, I had worked in the nightlife and, you know, you have that image, you see these women that have the perfect skin and the perfect boobs and body. And you're thinking, well, you know, I'm out here for tips and mine is mine as well, you know, do what I want to do. Unfortunately, I didn't have the money or anything at that time to do that. So I knew I always wanted to get breast implants, right? My mom had them, friends had gotten them. And I was just like, this is something that I'm definitely going to get. So I worked hard at it. Here I am now, I'm in the corporate world and I'm wearing suits and I never felt like a woman. I never felt like people were taking me seriously, right? Because here I am standing up in front of a room and talking to all these people. And I'm like, I feel like a little girl. So I had scheduled the appointment. I had put my money down. It was um, 2011, no, wait, 2010, I think I got them done. I have to go back and see. Maybe it was 2000 or yeah, maybe 2010. It's it's going on 11 years in March. It was just 10 years. So yeah. And then, um, so I got them in and I thought that I was just unstoppable, right? And I finally felt like my boobs had matched my butt size because I was always having a big booty. And, but- not even three months later, I was diagnosed with my first illness, which is an autoimmune deficiency. I started getting these spots that were spot going up on my feet and it's called granuloma annular. And I had a biopsy done of it. And they were like, this is what it is. It's caused by stress or it's caused by like all these, it's a whole bunch of underlining stuff, but I never linked it to me getting these things put into my body. Um, I've also had a piercing done on my belly button. I've had my nose pierced and everything rejected. So my body was already telling me things are rejecting, right? So then I then find out that I have hypothyroidism. And then all these things just started coming up. Here I am driving in corporate industry. I can't even make it to Delaware. I can't even make it to DC. I'm so exhausted. I'm pulling over to the side of the road and I'm taking naps. I'm like, who, what is going on my body? Not until about five years ago did I start to link all this together because it started becoming more we talked about in social media about women with breast implants illness and this is happening to them and that's happening to them and they're getting puffy eyes and they're getting dermatitis all over their face and stuff. I'll have to share pictures with you. It just grows all over my face all the time. Dermatitis it just doesn't even matter. Um, uh, you know, premature aging, like all this stuff, all this stuff was starting to align for me. And I just really started about five years ago, digging into it, talking to doctors. And I um, was just, you know, a lot of doctors said, look, I've really talked to a lot of women and they're starting to link it to all of this. So fast forward to just recently, um, I, or re-forward, whatever that word was, (laughs) just a few months ago, I had this testing done called, it's called thermography imaging. So it's like an image of your body in a heat radiance and it shows all the inflammation in your body and it is crazy what has showed up for me and it showed like like all this um uh stuff in my neck it showed it showed chronic sinus I've always had chronic sinus sinus since the day I've had my boobs put in so anyway here I am on this journey getting all these tests done doing all my research connecting with other women on Facebook and Instagram and I was just like I'm done I'm getting these out of my body I have built myself up with self love so much that I love me for who I am I don't care if I'm back to the itty bitty titty committee it is truly what God God has made me that way so why am I changing it yeah is it fun to sometimes get facials and botox and all that yeah absolutely because we want to feel good you know and young But when you go and you put a foreign object in your body and your body's rejecting it and you're getting all these symptoms from it, it's, it's a game changer. Like they've got to get out of my body. So I am scheduled, um, uh, March 23rd. It'll actually wind up being my 11 year anniversary. I wish I could get it done sooner. I've been on a waiting list. It is the biggest thing that women are going through right now. They're realizing, and even women that, you know, had to get them in because of going through chemo or, you know, Uh, having breast cancer, 
there are women that are coming out and saying now that my body's shutting down in ways that it's never happened. I shouldn't have had these done. You know, we do them for certain reasons. Yeah. They're all different reasons, but then we find out our body's not liking it. So then we go through the journey of getting them out. But yeah, and just three weeks ago, it was all over the news. Um, the FDA finally put a black um, a black box on the box of the breast implants. And you now have to go through all this stuff before even getting them put in your body because it can cause hundreds of different things. You think medication can do certain things to your body? Try putting breast implants in your body and see, see what, what goes wrong. It's just, it's sad, it's scary, but... I am beyond ready and so excited for the journey of, you know, healing and detoxing my body after getting them out. Right. It's going to take some, it's going to take a while, but yeah. I'm excited for it. I really am truly excited for it. Thank you for sharing that. Cause I know yeah. when you posted your thermography or whatever you call yeah. it and you saw all the yes. red places, yep. it was crazy. It wasn't like just, Oh, right around like your breast implants that was no. like, you know, inflamed, but it was all these other all over my areas. body. Yeah. yeah. I suffer from, from a lot of uh, gut health issues, um, you know, IBS, you name it. And you, I feel it every single day. So it's going to be very interesting. And, and thank you for sharing this too, because I really feel like I need to start putting more of my voice out there about it because there are women that, you know, I have shared it slightly on stories and women write me. I woke up one morning with like 30 private messages saying, Tara, I'm going through the same thing and I don't know what to do, you know? And it's scary because people say, I can't afford to get them out. But I feel like insurance is starting to really dig in and, and pick up the pieces a little bit to it. So I say, don't be afraid, go for your consultation. You know, a lot of these places will submit it to insurance. And even if the insurance gives you some money towards it, your health is so much more important than keeping those, those babies out. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I'll definitely make sure we follow up and see how your, your journey is going. Cause this, yeah. uh, this episode, even though it's my birthday today, we're definitely, I know. it's not going live today. So it'll go live in probably February. So it probably will be before you actually have your surgery. So yeah. um, we'll have to follow up and just kind of see what happened after. How are you feeling? And, and things like that too. Cause I think it's really important to talk about those things. Cause really that's you know, that's what this podcast is really all about is to really let moms, especially know that you're not alone and that there are so many people that are going through what you are going through, but it's important to talk about these things too, because, you know, you don't want to feel alone and you don't want to feel embarrassed or ashamed or anything like that because it's your journey mm -hmm. and that someone has gone through that before. So I appreciate you being brave and, and talking about it too and sharing. Of course. Yes. Thank you for asking. Thanks for bringing it up. I was excited when you said that. I was like, yes, let's yeah. talk about it. Yeah, I'm like, we have to talk about this. I'm an I, open book though. You know me. I know, I know, but it is, it's, you know, so I have seen it so much more. I have had friends that, you know, are having symptoms and having all of these things, autoimmune diseases, things going on and not saying that that's the root cause of everything, but I do believe in let's try and figure out what is the problem? Like, why is this happening? And yeah. if you do have something like that, that is in your body, you know, for whatever reason, then it's, it's something to look at. Um, you know, and some women aren't having the symptoms. Some women don't have the symptoms at all. They don't even know that they're having, you know, and that's good. It's your body's not fighting it, but then there's women where it really just shuts their bodies down really. Yeah. And I don't have it nearly as bad as some women. Yeah. So, but yet all I say is, look, if you're going to get it, you know, just do your research, please, please, please do your research before getting breast implants. Yeah. Yeah. And just and know so the warning signs. Do you find because so Tara, they she had she and her husband and family had just made a big move from the East Coast to um, the West Coast. She's out in Arizona. Um, you know, her move was crazy. And then while when she moved out there, like Mark was away for a while, um, you know, training. So you were home doing all of these things, you know, on your own, um, you know, while he was gone as well. So it's it's, you know, it's it's very difficult to move somewhere new, but then to also have your family and then have your husband be gone, but to be able to make friends, because I think as women, when we move to a new area, creating friendships can be a struggle for so many because you have your friendships that you had maybe in high school or your kids when they play sports, like that's your new group of friends already. Like you bought your group of friends from whatever sport your kid is playing. I know. You know? 
it's so true. But like, how, how did you do it? Like, how do you move somewhere and like make friends and, and do that? Like, how, how do you do that? Because you, I feel like you are so effortless and like, you are just so, um, like giving in, in the way that you look and your smile and, and people are just attracted to you, like, because yeah, of you. your friendliness and, and you feel safe. Let's just put it that I feel like you feel like safe because so many times women can be like conniving or like, oh my gosh, she's going to try and pull me down. But you always oh. lift women up. How do you move somewhere new and like make friendships? Like, how did you do it? How are you doing it? So, oh gosh, that move. Oh my God. It was not easy. And it was all during COVID. Um, but I am a spontaneous you know, mom and, and woman and wife. And I love the journey that God is continuing to bring us on. And I always go with things with open heart, right? So this move, although it had some very scary, debilitating anxiety moments, depression, um, intrusive thought, you name it. I had it all, girl. It was, it was, I was in a pretty dark place at the time too, when all of this was happening, but I also continuously, I probably prayed more to God in that in, time frame than I probably have in my entire life. So I have to always say, you know, thank you to God for getting me through those seven months because it was not easy. It was not easy. And I've even talked to you during that time and told you it just wasn't easy, but I made it through. So, um, yeah, we moved to Arizona and before we moved, I had found out where we were going to come to the, to the town. Right. And I looked for a Facebook group and I found Maricopa mom group where it was in this town of Arizona. And I had wrote them and I said, can I be a part of this group? We're moving cross country with six of us from New Jersey. And they said, absolutely. So I put a picture up of me and our whole family that we just took on our doorstep of when we just adopted Charlie, um, right before we got on the road to RV cross country to Arizona. And I explained who I was and that we were moving cross country and this and that. And I asked like about schools and daycares and just put everything out there. Yeah. The response was amazing. And these women are friending me and we're finding out we have, you know, kids the same age and all these interests. So I felt like I was already coming here to people I already knew. Yeah. And then, so that made me feel at peace and made me feel, feel good. And then of course we get here and then the second COVID stuff happens and I feel like we're all on lockdown. And it was just, it was a scary, scary time, scary moment. We lost some family members during all that too. And then I knew that Mark was getting ready to leave December 28th for seven months and he was not allowed to come home because of COVID. Um, and it, you know, I'm grateful for Alicia, my 21 year old, because she was my saving grace for so much. She helped me with her siblings. She and I bounced, you know, so many different conversations across. She was truly my, my best friend and my, my daughter, my everything during all of that. And, you know, we had our moments too, where we would want to lock ourselves in the room and cry and be away. You know, it was, it was hard. It's just yeah. very hard, but truly grateful for her. And then once we started going to parks and meeting up with these other women and, you know, connecting on social media sometimes is a really, it's, it's a really interesting and neat thing to do. You know, even though you're not always face-to-face, -face, you know, and you, maybe you're doing lives or you're, you know, FaceTiming with people or whatever, it's still the, a connection. You're still learning about somebody, you're learning about yourself, and then you can always go and meet them, you know, if it feels right. So I did a lot of that too. Um, and just putting yourself out there because we deserve to be surrounded by amazing people because it lights us up and it lights them up. And during that time, I actually had put out that I wanted to coach two women. Um, I was doing a sponsorship for free and I connected with two women in this area. And those two women are like my best friends right now, even though I went and I coached them and all that. I just, adore. it was like, God brought them to me and be like, these are now your friends. You guys are forever going to make memories together. So I did do that as well. So there's just little things that you do. Um, we don't so much have we have a lot of snowbirds in our like community area right here. We don't have a lot of kids, um, but there were people that just recently moved in that have kids. So we're always outdoors, you know, and I like to just, just talk to people. It's, it's just in my nature. I'm a Virgo. That's just my sign. I love connecting with people. Um, and I feel like always, if you walk in the door or walk into a space, you're held, held high and you're smiling, you're going to attract the right people into your life. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Um, I just looked at the time because I, yeah, I, I know I had texted you and I was like, we can't talk for two hours. We can totally talk for a yeah. podcast for two hours. Yeah. So not that I want to wrap it up because no, like, no, no, you, 
I think like just your breast implants could be like a podcast talking about adoption could be a podcast, like self-care could be a, like, there's so many layers to you. It's awesome. Um, and I know that this is going to really help so many women and, and listeners that are going to listen to this podcast when it's released, but do you have any like advice or like anything that you haven't shared for, for moms on just like loving themselves or anything that you want to share, maybe that you haven't shared yet, just a great piece of advice. So no matter what we go through as moms, you know, I know that we hear voices sometimes in our, in our heads that are saying, you know, no, stay in, do this, don't do that. You know, we're our biggest critic. We truly are. But especially in today's world, when you're feeling down and you're feeling sad and you just feel lost and you don't know where to go, I promise you just reaching out to somebody, a friend, anybody, just sending a message and just being like, hey, can you hop on a call? Can you, can we meet up? Can we do something? It just shifts you a little bit to getting to a different spot and seeing better, more clarity and more love for yourself and, and for everybody around you, because we can really zone ourselves in. And what I'm just, what I'm trying to say is don't hold in those dark secrets. Don't hold in that anxiety. Don't hold in any of that because you are not alone. We all go through it. I don't care if you're a famous person or a billionaire or somebody, you know, who, who looks like an icon and you go on their social media page and everything looks so freaking perfect. They are going through, if not had gone through the same exact thing that you're going through. Please don't hold it in. I just ask, please don't hold it in and just release that to somebody and pray over who you're supposed to talk to. Because I feel as though God's always there listening for you. He is always there to, you know, to listen and to guide you in the right direction. We don't always have to stay in that dark spot. And I feel like um, just praying on that person of who you're supposed to reach out to, they'll show up. Mm -hmm. They 100% will show up. And also it's not always about us. There's other people that are feeling that same way too. So if you pray on dear Lord, who needs to hear my voice today? Who needs to, you know, lighten up? Who do I need to reach out to and just send a voice message to, you know, not so much texting, you know, pick up a damn phone and call somebody, send a voice message. You know, you don't know what that does. Text message, like, come on, you know, that's so like, oh, I don't know. It doesn't really open up your heart. And I feel like you speaking your voice really will bring some, some light into you as well. Yeah. So I just say, don't keep that darkness to yourself. Mm -hmm. Open up. Yeah, no, that's beautiful for you. I, I'd love to ask this question at the end because, you know, as women, we tend to not celebrate ourselves and, you know, you do such a great job of this and you've discovered this and it's a practice because nobody is perfect at loving self-love. No one is perfect at it. It is a constant practice and reminder of how to do it every day. But you know, as women, we are so quick to like critique ourselves, right? You look in the mirror, you find all the spots or like, oh, I'm dragging or I'm stooping. <laughs> I forget the word. Sagging. Swooping. Oh, I just yeah. the word. Swooping. Um, you know, sagging. You know, all these different things that are wrong with us, but there's so much that is right and we tend to overlook it. So I want to ask you, what do you love about yourself right now? Like, what do you, can you be like, oh my gosh, I love this about myself? Um, so honestly, I would have to say a little bit of everything. I mean, my personality, um, you know, being the mom that I knew that I've always wanted to be showing up for, for my children. i love that about me because I, I, not every day is perfect, but I try harder than every other, every next day, you know, to be, to be better, to show up more. Um, yeah. I mean, I st will still pick flaws out, you know, but truly God made us this way. And I feel like if we take care of ourselves and we eat healthy and we do the right things, we're going to feel alive and we're going to, you know, look alive, feel alive and look alive. But, you know, there's a lot of different things that we can do, but I feel as though we just truly have to say, this is what God gave us. You know, he didn't give us, he gave us what is meant to be. And we have to flaunt it that way. You know, and that's why I'm on that journey of breast implant on this. This is why I'm on that journey of self-love because I didn't love anything about myself. Um, and I feel like it's not so much of what we look like, it's how we show up, how we make others feel. Because again, it 
shows in within us and, and lights us up. Yeah. Um, but I think that could be like a, a revolving conversation in circle, but you know, just really truly know that you are who you are meant to be for a reason. And you're meant to look like how you're supposed to look for a reason. Yeah. My wow. husband always says, you know, don't, don't go doing this. Don't go doing that. I married you for who you are. Don't change different things, you know? And, and you have to listen to that. If he loves me for who I am, why am I going and changing it for, for who, you know, it's yeah. So yeah, the sagging face and all that, when that, when it eventually starts to get sagging, he's yeah. going to love it no matter what. And so am I, I am going to, to love it as well. Oh, we just yeah. have to just give ourselves grace, yeah. you know? Absolutely. So where, where can people find you? Like everyone's going to want to know where you are and, and look you up and check you out and follow your journey. Like how can people find you? So I, uh, I have my website, which is selfloveandsuccess.com, or you can also find me on Facebook, which is Tara Ann LaPera, or you could find me on Instagram, which it was self love and success, but I did just change it to my name. So it is, I believe Tara LaPera on there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're the three right there. And of course my email is on there. And if you want to, you know, send me a message or a messenger, however that, however you feel, I would absolutely love to hear from them. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you so much for yeah. having these conversations with us. And I know that yeah, I feel like you like hit it on them. You hit everything. We got so much into this conversation today. Check, check, check. <laughs> I'm going to listen back and be like, oh my God, Tara, I've got all this going on. I did all that. What am I doing? <laughs> No, it's amazing. It's crazy on days. It's, it's and I always just say it's an it's a conversation. Like it's real oh. people like just having a simple conversation, but like again, letting people know that they're not alone because there are many oh. women that are going through the things that you are going through that are like, oh my gosh, like I'm looking at adopting or I'm looking at this or I'm looking yeah. at my or whatever it is. I'm looking to oh look my god, I would more. yeah. So um, to be there for people if they want to know what direction or give them some love and guidance and that absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. So thank you. But it is all about, it truly is all about showing up for yourself and showing up for others. It really is. That's what life is about, especially in today's world. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see like the ripple effect and stuff too, when you start to do that and start to love others and just start to do little random acts of kindness and voice messages and things like that. Like it does have a ripple effect on the world. So thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me and happy birthday again. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye, my friend. Bye. Love you. Love you.